Hey Bass Geek here and today we're going to be talking about spinner baits for pre and post spawn bass. I do things a little differently. Let me show you. All right geeks, thanks for joining me on the channel again today. We're going to talk about pre and post spawn spinner baits. Something I love to throw. I've loved to throw them for years and years and years. Before we get into talking about that though, I do want to give a couple of shout outs to you to let you know that there are some things out there. Holy cow, there is a bat literally flying right there. What in the world? If you know my luck, you'll know that's hardly unbelievable right now. Anyway, I don't know if you've seen it or not, but let's get back into it. So guys, the hats are on the website, bassgeekfishing.com under gear. You can find hat, shirt. I've got short sleeve performance shirts. I don't have the long sleeves yet. Hopefully they'll get some in and we can add them to the website. Check everything out, man. It does help the channel. Speaking of which, if you like a video, guys, hit that thanks. A dollar donation will put you up at the end of every single Bass Geek Box video as a sponsor. If you donate $5, you sponsor five months. And we'll go ahead and give you a shout out. Let's get into talking about these spinner baits. So I love a lot of different spinner baits and I keep them in my flambeau blade crate. And I keep a bunch, I use a bunch of different spinner baits, but there's some new ones, newly redesigned that I want to share with you. And it's these two right here by Omega Custom Tackle. And there's something pretty special about this. So for you guys that don't know, you go back and look at several videos that I talk about blades. Particular blades on a spinner bait are better at certain times. And so one thing that I do is I carry around a box with blades and skirt making material with me, that sort of stuff. And generally the four that I'm gonna carry around are gonna be like a white, a gold, and you know, just your standard silver, nickel, whatever you want to call it. I do carry around some sartreuse, and of course, the box I forgot to bring it this time. <laughs> but anyway, the reason why I carry them around, let's talk about this. The three most dominant colors for me tend to be, you know, your white, your gold, and your silver. On cloudy days or days when you've got a little bit of wind, got a little bit of chop or, or a lot of chop, a gold tends to be great because it's not just reflecting a gray sky, which is what this is going to give you. So you get a little overcast, you get a little chop, that gold color is what you're going to what you're going to go to a little brighter day my standard is always going to be this this is where i'm going to start 90 percent of the time my silver blade especially if i'm i've got some wind you know some brighter days you know something that's going to give you good flash as you can see just like this day is going to give you now when i've got really heavy overcast skies really truly heavy overcast skies i am for sure going to that white blade. That white blade has caught me so many, so many bass on those really dull, muddy, overcast days. And then, like I said, the sartreuse is what I'm gonna do. Most time when I'm around a lot of smallmouth, I'm really targeting smallmouth, that color tends to be what gets the job done. You'll notice this is a pretty big spinner bait. And there's a reason for that. And I'm gonna show you what I like to do this time of year, pre-spawn, and even uh, a little bit after in the post-spawn, a little bit later in the post-spawn. But this is a big, big spinner bait. These are, I believe, three quarters ounces. And there's a reason for that. I fish deep a lot. So for me, this is going to be a bait that I can get down really deep around blowdowns or deep grass. Love that color, love that skirt, man. Great looking skirt. Again, I'm gonna be targeting a lot of shad type colors. And look at that, look at that color from Omega. That is a sexy color. Got a little bit of blue, a little bit of purple in there. But here's what makes this so great. A lot of times on my tandems, and I, 90% of the time, I'm using willow leaves because I fish clear water. And a lot, 90% of the time, I'm using tandems. But with most tandems, you can't change it out 
without cutting your clasp off right there or, or having to bend. That's a pain in the rear end to do on the water. So here's the key. Look at this clasp. It literally just pops loose. If you can see that little clasp and how it works right there, you can change both blades out quick and easy. So what you can do is you can save, say I just, say I want a silver blade, but I want them to be smaller. All I have to do is get my split ring pliers out and change here. And then this little clasp makes it super easy. So as you can see, you just get it up in there and there you go. Hold it still and it snaps right into place. There you have it. You've got your kicker blade ready to roll. And I love that you can change both blades. You can match them, you can mismatch them. You save your blades off your old spinners. You know, when you get them bent out, when you're just whacking those bass with them and put them in a box. And now you've got a spinner bait that you can customize on the fly. That clasp is about as cool as it gets. Same thing here. Every single one of them are made the same way. Now, the great thing about it is, and like I said, let's look real quick. I mean, literally, all you do is you turn it and you just slide it right off. Put it right back on there. And you slide it right back in. So I can literally change this out, go gold, silver, silver, gold, any which way I want to, white, gold, white, silver, Whatever I want to do, I can customize these blades to whatever I want them to be. Another thing I love is they do the R-bend, but they put this cool little keeper on there, this little bit of plastic. So it keeps this bait and the knot from sliding all around. You keep it out here on the tie where it's supposed to be. Sweet, quick little add-on right there that I love. So let's talk about the knot I like. I just like my good old Pizzantine. It's super fast. And then I'm just going to spin it about seven times. Four, five, six, seven. And then as you can see, you got a loop right here that creates itself at the top. You just pull it down. You wet that. Cinch it and slide it down. Then cut that tag in, leave you about a quarter inch or so, and you're good to go. So now let's talk about rod reel line setup for throwing this heavier spinner bait. So when it comes to my heavier spinner baits, guys, you don't need a crazy rod. I, I like to use it on 12, even 15 pound test. I like my TFO professional series. Now this is a seven foot heavy. I like a little bit of shorter rod because I can get it into tighter places you know, places like that over there. I can put it in, you know, the crux of those logs over there, you know, two or three different ways and hopefully get bites. Now, the reel that I love, yeah, I'm throwing a Super Duty on this. This is a Lose Super Duty and it's a six, eight to one. The thing about the Lose Super Duty, it can handle these bigger spinner baits. Line though, I told you I use 12 to 15 pound, but this is where I really love my canine fluoro. That is the copolymer. It's got just a little bit of stretch. Guys, I don't like a soft tip on a spinner spinning rod. A lot of guys do because they feel like they're pulling it away from the fish. I want to be able to feel every branch I'm ticking. So the canine fluoro is going to provide that for me and it's going to give a little bit of stretch so I'm getting that same sort of feel. But it is also neutral buoyancy, which means it don't float, it don't sink, it just stays right where you got it. Let's go talk about where, when, where, and how to throw this and how the bite's going to feel when you get one. Now, almost every spinner bait's going to have to be tuned. So if you feel like it's not running correctly, throw it out in front of you, reel it, make sure it's running straight up and down. If it's not running straight up and down, much like a buzz bait, so if it's rolling over to this side, just tweak it a little bit that way. Okay, that'll get it running a little more. You want it really dead in line with your hook 90% of the time. So one of the things I love is a spot like this. It's a creek channel swing. 
you know, you're starting to, the bass are starting to push back and we got a little bit of deep water right here. Like, you know, I'm sitting in 32 feet of water. That tree is gonna come way out here in 20 or 30 foot of water. Now, generally I like the wind. And when I first pulled up here, the wind was actually blowing in on this. I like the wind to be blowing in on this sort of setup. So now let's talk about bite, hook, set, fight, okay? Now the thing about a spinner bait, man, you wanna put it up in the crap, okay? You wanna put it in the crap. You don't wanna get it down in it unless you're using a little heavier line. That's a whole nother video. But 90% of the time, it'll come over trees, rocks, anything you, you wanna throw it in. I'm gonna throw it within two, three feet of the shoreline. So at first, I'm gonna give it a couple, three quick cranks to get it out of that shallow water. Then I'm gonna stop it and let it drop and I'm gonna slow roll it. Now, every once in a while, I'm just gonna stop. I may give it a couple of quick pops. I'm gonna change the way that spinnerbait looks coming back to me. And I mean, it really is that simple. If you're coming across grass, you can give it a couple of pops to get it free from grass. Not a lot of grass here. I like to target wood. Now, I also like places like this. See that point right there? I like to contour both sides, but I like some wood on it or some dirtier water. Not quite that right now. Now, let's talk about bite. What does a spinnerbait bite feel like? 90% of the time, a spinnerbait bite is going to be a pretty hard thump. They're going to come up beside of it just like a swim bait, and they're going to hit it. The one thing to remember on the bite and the hook set is to make absolutely certain that you wait until you feel the weight of the fish, just like a swim bait. Don't swing at the bite, stay calm, feel the weight of the fish, and then send it home. To me, I do it just like a swim bait. I side set because this is a lot of metal to hook set up and have that fish come up and jump. A side hook set, turn my body, hit him hard and keep my rod tip down. The reason why I'm keeping that rod tip down the whole time he gets here, and once he gets here, if I don't have a net man, or I don't have the net ready, or my net man doesn't have the net ready, you've got a single hook. That's exactly what you want. You're gonna boat hop him. You're gonna put him in the boat. You're not gonna wait. You're gonna put that bass in the boat. Do not fight that bass with a single hook bait especially a, a heavy single hook bait, like a spinner bait or a jig. That's why you want heavier line. Like I said, guys, this may be the most adaptive spinner bait that there is, man. Being able to change the blades, the skirts, save your spinner bait parts. You can make whatever you want out of this because of that fast clip. Hey, you wanna put a Colorado blade there? Put a Colorado blade there. You wanna put a Colorado here and a willow leaf there? Put one there. You wanna put an Indiana and a Col You can do it all. You can do it all. Save those blades, save those skirts, man. They come with great skirts already. Sorry, I hope you can hear me. But man, that clasp right there is really revolutionary. You don't have to carry a thousand spinnerbaits every time you go to the water. And you guys that fish from the bank, you better check this out. Now this is a heavy one. Guys, they make them in all sizes, a ton of different colors, and a ton of blade arrays, I guess you could say. A ton of different blade configurations, right? Go check out Omega Custom Tackle. Go check out the new spinner bait. There'll be links in the description. Guys, questions, comments in the comments section. As always, you know, I love to find cool stuff like this. I love to talk fishing. Like it if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Make sure you guys ring that bell so you get the notifications when these videos come out. Hey, 100% Watch Squad, you guys rock. Hey, you all rock. Thank you. All right, guys, let's get this URL. Let's find out who won this awesome box from Nico. Let's see, include replies, filter duplicates, all the rest of it. Got to math a little bit, I always forget that part. 211 comments. Now, let's see who won. Vaughn Littleton, Nico has some awesome colors. 100% watch squad in the house. All right, Vaughn, congratulations. I'll drop a comment on your comment in this video and uh, let you know that you won.
Congratulations, brother. And as always, you guys rock.